What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Bottom Line Survival. Today, I'm going to be giving you a video all about the items that I keep on body every single day. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first item that I'd like to go over is a pocket knife. Uh, I think having a knife on you every day comes in handy more often than not. And the knife that I carry is the Kershaw 1776 Link Assisted Opening Pocket Knife. Uh, I picked this knife up back in 2018. This was actually the first pocket knife that I ever bought with my own money. Um, and since I've had it, you know, I've had zero problems with it. <clears throat> I use it every single day to open packages, open mail, um, you know, fix little tiny projects here and there. And in a worst case scenario, I have it as a self-defense tool as well. Um, like I said, I've had it for about two years. And in those two years, I haven't had any problems with durability. I haven't had any problems with comfort and it doesn't get in the way of other items that I carry on body. So kind of getting into the features and the information about this knife. This is from Kershaw. It's American made. Um, on the outside, you'll notice the handles as well as this deep carry pocket clip. You know, I've had zero problems with this pocket clip. It stays firm in pocket or on a bag. Um, wherever you decide to clip this, it's not going anywhere. Um, I have had some just usage uh, wear here. It has kind of wore over time. I personally don't mind that. I like, you know, some of my items to have a little bit of character to them. So I don't necessarily mind the wear and tear on the pocket clip itself. Um, a cool feature about this pocket clip is that you can unscrew uh, these two screws here, flip the blade over, and you can screw it in on the opposite side of the blade um, or opposite side of the handle. So it is an ambidextrous pocket clip, which, you know, I don't necessarily need to switch it, but if you, for whatever reason, decided that that was important to you, it is relatively easy to do so. Um, this knife is made in America. If I open it up for you, here on the blade, it does have the Made in the USA as well as a model number from Kershaw. Um, which, you know, if American made products are a priority for you, this is or was a great option. Unfortunately, um, Kershaw discontinued this blade back in 2020. I'm not 100% sure why they did so, but. Um, you cannot buy this from Kershaw's website or any third-party retailer like Bass Pro um, or a Cabela's, which in my opinion is, you know, it's unfortunate just because I really do like this knife a lot. It offers a lot of versatility um, as well as reliability. Uh, and that's, you know, those are two of the things that I'm mainly looking for when I'm um, picking a knife for an EDC kit. Um, the, the handles themselves, to go in a little bit more on the durability, are a glass-filled nylon. So it is really lightweight, um, but it's gonna enable you to kinda go about your day confidently knowing that, you know, if you drop this thing or ding it up, um, and you're in, in using it, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna break it. Uh, the durability is, in my opinion, unmatched in a lot of situations. Um, and I'm comparing uh, with, you know, other knives that I have. Um, I have used the butt of this uh, handle as a bottle opener in the past. So as you can see, there is a little bit of wear and tear there, but that's not do um, to any accidental drops or um, crushes or anything like that. I, you know, purposely used this part for that. Um, so that damage is um, self-made, which, um, you know, isn't too big of a deal. 
I like using my tools for multiple things. That's why I said this offers a little bit of versatility. Um, and one of those things was a bottle opener. Uh, I don't drink often, but when I do, I often don't have a bottle opener on me. Um, and so this came in handy for light jobs such, such as that. Um, <clears throat> other than the, the purposeful damage to this blade, I haven't had too much, um, too many problems. As you can see here, there's a little bit of scuffs, uh, and dings here from dropping it from time to time. But other than that, this handle has held up extremely well. Um, and like I said, it's very lightweight. So when it, when it is in my pocket, it's close to unnoticeable. Um, it is very thin. I don't know the exact dimensions on this knife, um, but when it is in pocket, it's taking up very little space. I would say this is comparable to probably the thickness of a cell phone, um, maybe a little bit smaller depending on what kind of case you have it in. So it, it, the pocket footprint is very small, very convenient. Um, and overall, I love this thing. Getting into the blade itself, this is a 420 HC steel, which if you're not familiar with different types of steel, um, 420 HC is good with corrosion. Uh, it'll hold an edge really well. And then when it is time to sharpen this thing back up, um, it's not gonna give you too much difficulty in terms of uh, you know, the amount of effort that it's gonna take to sharpen this thing. Um, it is a drop point blade style, which I really like in a pocket knife, um, just because if I am using this on a daily basis, it, there's not gonna be one specific point on the blade that gets more wear uh, than another. When you slice through something, no matter where you start on this edge, it's gonna uh, slide seamlessly throughout the entire blade edge. So wear and tear is consistent throughout the entire blade, which, you know, is important in terms of um, needing something that's reliable for any situation that may come up throughout your day-to-day -day life. Um, you know, if you have a blade that is getting more wear on one point of the blade than it is on another, that can, you know, become a problem because I'm assuming if you are getting more wear on a specific part, I'm sure it's because um, that's, you know, the point that you like to use the most when it comes to cutting. So if the point that you most often use is wearing down faster than another point of the blade, that could quickly become not necessarily a problem, but definitely an inconvenience. Um, that is easily avoided if you just go with a drop point style such as this. Um, obviously, this blade isn't designed for heavy duty use like chopping or um, prying or anything like that. So I haven't really tested out the point of this blade up until now. Um, but since I've had it, I haven't had too many problems with this point doling out or uh, deforming, which has been nice. I did work in a warehouse here locally for about two and a half years. Uh, I was the, the receiving manager, so I was opening a lot of box, boxes, um, plastic wrap, opening pallets, and if I could, I would use just a traditional box opener that the company provided, but in a lot of cases, I found that this knife completed that task a lot more effectively and honestly a lot more comfortably than a traditional box cutter. So I did use this, you know, five days a week for, uh, I'd say, up to 20 times a day um, at the minimum. So it, it's held up really well. I've had zero problems with it. Um, and you know, like I said, I'm, I'm coming back to it. Unfortunately, it is discontinued. So you're not gonna be able to find this blade um, anywhere, at least brand new. I'm sure you could find it from somebody who's looking to sell it um, and it's been used, which, you know, in, in some situations, that's not a bad thing. Um, if the person that's selling it took care of it and, um, you know, it's in relatively decent shape, I would suggest to go ahead and pick it up if you can 
like I said, I've, I love this knife. I've had it for, you know, going on four years now. Um, it's been nothing but reliable and durable and it fits really well in my EDC kit. That's the first item. Uh, obviously you don't have to have Kershaw. There's plenty of different um, USA made blades out there. Just make sure that whichever blade you choose, it is gonna be functional and works for you. That's really what EDC comes down to. You know, not everybody's uh, everyday carry is gonna be the same. Um, for different environments, for different cities, different towns, um, different jobs, you know, it, it differs from person to person. So if Kershaw doesn't work for you, if the link blade, if you happen to have one or have found one, you know, isn't gonna work for you, then that's just fine. Just make sure that whatever you go with, it fits your needs. Um, because that's what EDC is all about. It's having the items to uh, enable you to complete any project, task, or any problem that comes up throughout your day. The next item is a multi-tool. Uh, I recently just bought this skeleton tool from Leatherman. I had done some research on it and watched a handful of review videos on YouTube, you know, kind of just going over the features and overall quality of this thing. Um, before I went ahead and Pulled the trigger on purchasing this multi-tool I carried uh, a Gerber which worked fine I still have it I now have it incorporated into my go bag um, it was a little bit bulkier um, you know and on in all honesty it was a lot bulkier and it offered a lot of tools that I would rarely use um, and so for an EDC situation, I'd rather have a multi-tool that is a lot sleeker um, and, and, you know, takes up a lot less space, especially if I'm not using, you know, more than three, maybe four of the tools that are offered. Um, so that's really what led to me searching for a different multi-tool. And lucky for me, and lucky for anyone looking for something similar to this, Leatherman offers a great option. Uh, this is the base level skeleton tool. They offer, uh, I think, I wanna say like three or four different variations. Uh, the next step up would be the Leatherman skeleton tool CX, which I, th I think it just has a higher quality steel uh, that's used for the blade and the blade style is a little bit different. But other than that, I think the tools um, across the board are the same. So right out of the box, you get, I believe, eight tools, and three of them are accessible while this is fully closed. The first one being the knife, which is made of a 420 HC steel. It's the same steel that my Kershaw knife is made of. And on the base model, it is a serrated edge, or at least partially serrated edge. Uh, I know some people aren't huge fans of serrated blades. You know, for me personally, and what I'm using this for, I'm not too concerned about it having a partial serration. If I do find myself in a situation where the, the serrated blade isn't what I need, that's why I have a pocket knife. That's why my drop point blade is on my body. Um, but you know, for everyday tasks like opening packages, opening mail, um, you know, breaking down boxes, or even if you wanted to, I guess you could use this for food prep. Um, it's going to get the job done just fine. I mean, obviously if, you know, you're kind of on the pretentious side and I mean that with all due respect, but if you are kind of on that pretentious side of things and you like things a certain way, then maybe the the base level skeletal isn't for you, which is why Leatherman offers different models and different blade types. So, you know, find what works for you and go from there. But I really love this thing. Um, I've had it for about two weeks. So obviously I haven't had a lot of time to put it through the ringer and see what it's capable of, but I'm definitely excited to see what it can offer me in the future. And if you flip it over, you get a two-in-one tool here 
You get a bottle opener, which is uh, conveniently labeled by Leatherman. Let's see if I can get the focus on it here. I guess it doesn't want to focus, but here on the edge, you can kind of see the outline of a bottle. Um, and then it has a carabiner clip slash belt loop clip, which I guess it's a nice touch. If you want to just clip it onto a backpack and go, you can. If you don't want it in your pocket, you can clip it to your belt loop and it'll stay on there just fine. Um, I personally carry this in pocket with the pocket clip that they uh, install. But that's definitely a great option in terms of versatility. Um, and then also with this bottle opener, as I said before, I was using my uh, pocket knife to open bottles in the past, which for longevity isn't great. I have a designated bottle opener that I'm not going to be worried about breaking or long-term use. So those are the three tools that are accessible from the outside. Um, and then, like I said, it has this deep carry pocket clip which is how I carry this multi-tool. Um, and I found it very sturdy, very convenient. I'm never worried about this thing slipping out of my pocket when I'm walking around or getting in and out of my truck. Um, and then when you open this thing up, the first thing you'll notice, one, is the, you know, the very unique design. Um, they cut out a lot of material throughout the handles, um, the butt of the, the tool, um, the blade itself. There's a lot of empty space to kind of mitigate the overall weight of this thing. For EDC, that's super nice. Um, honestly, that's one of the more important things to think about when putting together an EDC kit. You don't want some, you know, you don't want a kit that's gonna weigh you down throughout the day. You want something that's gonna basically be unnoticeable as you go about your day-to-day -day tasks. Um, but yeah, that's me just kind of rambling. Getting into the the actual tools of this thing, here on the plier you have a four-in-one setup. So you have your traditional needle nose pliers, um, your traditional um, bolt grip pliers here, and then you have a wire cutter. And then at the very base of the pliers, you have a little tiny notch that can be used for wire stripping or hard wire cutting. Um, so four in one here. And then on this arm, you have a bit carrier, which these bits are interchangeable. So, you know, you have a multi-tool within a multi-tool. So if you set it up like this, um, you know, you get a really long handle um, and then the bit carrier itself is set up in a way where the bits aren't going to come out on their own. You have to press this release button and then they'll slide out very easy. The bits themselves are uh, double sided. So you get two and one for every bit that you have. Um, on the tool, you can carry two bits at a time. So I just keep the most commonly needed uh, bits, which is a Phillips head. And then on this arm, I'm sure you've noticed there's a little bit carrier here where you can press it up. And then I keep uh, just the flat heads in that one. Oh, and most day-to-day -day tasks of Phillips and a flat head are going to accomplish most tasks. Um, so that's why I keep them on the tool. And then the little carrier itself, there's just a little inlay here. You can just put the bit in. Um, pinch it in and then it's not going anywhere. You can flick it, drop it, shake it. It's staying in there very sturdy. And then to get these back in, you have to press that release, put the bit back in there, and then it's good to go. Um, like I said, I've only had this for about two weeks. So obviously my review and opinion on this are based on a very short window. But initial quality is, you know, beyond any expectation that I had for, uh, you know, I think this is a $75 multi-tool. Um, it's American made and you can feel that quality once you put it in your hand. Um, and 
that the tools that they have built into this thing are basically the tools that I found myself most commonly using on my old multi-tool. Um, so it suits my needs perfectly. It's sleek, it's thin, it's lightweight. Uh, it's, I, would, I would call this heavy duty. I'm not worrying about this thing breaking on me anytime soon. In the future, I can do an updated review on this thing just to give you guys uh, a more in-depth opinion on it as time goes by. My initial opinion on this is that this is the way to go for most people in my opinion. The next item that I carry every day is the Leatherman Bit Kit. So I know I kind of just went on a whole spiel about how I wanted to downsize my multi-tool. Um, but when I was looking on Leatherman's website, I noticed that they make a bit kit that comes with 21 double-sided interchangeable bits. Um, when I saw that, you know, it was about 25 bucks. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and got it. I'm, I've incorporated this as a pocket carry, um, but if you don't necessarily want to keep this on your pocket, if you carry a backpack with you every day, you can just throw it in your backpack and you have it with you no matter what. Um, the versatility that this thing offers you at such a low price, I think, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer in terms of going ahead and picking this up as long as the Leatherman model that you have uh, enables you to incorporate this when you when you order it these two plastic sheaths actually come separate since I'm carrying it in pocket I didn't want two of those things jangling around as I walked and went about my day so I went ahead and put some uh, adhesive velcro between the two of them and just have the have them velcro together so if needed I can separate these things um, but in most cases I having them together is probably more convenient anyway. And especially if you're keeping it in pocket with other items, this takes up a lot less space and you know, just a little bit more organized. Um, but really the versatility that this offers is mainly why I got it. It takes your eight tool skeletal all the way up to uh, 50, a 50 tool uh, skeletal, which, you know, in a lot of cases, having more variety in terms of the tools you have on you is going to pay dividends um, in the long run. If I, if for some reason, I'm trying to fix something at the house or out and about, and I don't have a bit on my tool itself, which, like I said, are the Phillips and the flathead, I can go to my bit kit here and see if there's something in here that can solve the problem. They have square bits, star bits, um, different size Phillips and flatheads, and it just offers a lot more versatility, which in terms of problem solving is one of the more important aspects. If you carry tools with you every day in your vehicle and you don't necessarily need this, you, you have those tools on you, then, you know, it's not for you. But if you're not someone who goes out of the way to carry a tool bag and a full tool set in your vehicle, then this is definitely the way to go in my opinion. It's super cheap um, and offers, you know, a large range of versatility. I know I keep saying versatility, but that's really what this offers and that's why I got it. So if you have a Leatherman and it, you can incorporate this into that Leatherman model, definitely go ahead and pick this up. And if you are about to buy a Leatherman, definitely look to see if the model you like um, can tag team with this Leatherman Big Kit. Next up, I carry a flashlight. When I first got into EDC, uh, I was watching all these videos on YouTube about all the EDC setups that different content creators had, and a lot of them had flashlights. And I kept thinking to myself, why on earth would you carry a flashlight on your body? I, you know, I was naive at the time and I thought it was funny and you know I was just like it just seems silly to me to carry a flashlight what in what situation are you going to need that and then I received this Olight Warrior Mini as a gift 
and I decided to incorporate it into my everyday carry. Um, so once I did that, I quickly realized the importance of a flashlight in an everyday carry setup. Um, so to all those guys who carried flashlights and I laughed at you, you're not going to see this video, but my apologies. Um, you know, the need for a flashlight is endless. It's a simple task, really. If you drop something at night and you can't find it, turn your flashlight on that's in your pocket and make it a little bit easier. If you're digging around in your car looking for something and the dome lights in your car aren't bright enough, pull your flashlight out, solves that problem. Um, if you god forbid or on the side of the road because your car broke down or something something with your vehicle is you know doesn't sound right um pull out your flashlight and now you have a substantial source of light to at least try and fix the problem um having light is one of the most important aspects of an edc setup if you don't have light a lot of the tools and items that you carry are basically useless. I can have all the bits in the world. I can have multiple blades. I can have, you know, pliers. If I can't see what I'm doing, it's going to be pretty hard to use those things. So having a reliable flashlight is very important. Like I said, this was a gift. So there wasn't much thought on my end of things going into whether, you know, this was the right flashlight for me. Um, and fortunately, it has been. I know Olight kind of gets a lot of crap from the tactical community, um, the EDC community, the outdoors community. And you know, in some situations, that negative response from people is justified, I think. You know, Olight has put out some products that the quality, um, you know, is kind of questionable. But with that said, I've had zero problems with quality control on this Warrior Mini. This is the uh, first model that they put out and I know that they recently I guess not recently but they have commented on the fact that these will overheat um, so in the newer models they've adjusted and fixed that problem I personally haven't run into that yet I'm never um, using this flashlight for super extended periods of time where overheating would be a problem um, I haven't had any accidental turn turn ons for like while I'm walking around um, and it's in my pocket. Um, so per for me personally, that hasn't been a problem, but I know that that has been a problem for others. So if you, you know, at the end of this video are convinced that the Olight Warrior Mini is for you, um, obviously make sure you're getting one of the newer models um, that kind of address that. Olight specifically designed the Warrior Mini as an EDC flashlight. Um, so there's a lot of features on here that are put in for ease of use. Um, right off the bat, you have a two-way pocket clip, which comes in handy. Um, you have a you have dual switches. So you have a tactical switch here on the back that I have covered up with this rubber um, protective cover. But then you also have a a click here on the side where you can access a low light mode. If you hold it down, you can access a uh, the higher output. If you double click it, I think you can do that as well. If you triple click, you have a strobe mode and you can just turn it back off and it'll go back to that low light mode. Um, you can set this to turn on at a higher output mode or you can set this to turn on on the strobe mode, I believe. I personally like to keep this on the low mode because my tactical switch I'll full click it for the max capacity uh, output and then for just little things like looking around for something in my truck or on the ground I'll just quickly click the low light mode and it gives me plenty of light the, the grip on this flashlight is pretty aggressive so when it is in hand and you have a firm grip on it it's not going anywhere it's not slipping around in your hand um, it's gonna comfortably dig into your skin so it's not moving which I really like. And then if I take that cover off, you have the um, tactical switch, which does have some protective prongs here. 
um, as well as this being magnetic. So like I said, if I'm working on my truck, I can just pop this to my hood and then I kind of have a dome light of sorts. But with this tactical click, you can do full click for the max output. You can half click it for uh, the low light mode. You can hold this flashlight in a much more tactical sense. But I think overall the features that are included on this flashlight and just the overall size of this thing um, for a comparison, this is the Skeletool and this is my Kershaw blade. It's very small, it's very compact, it doesn't take up a lot of pocket space. Um, and in the pocket that I carry this in, I'm also carrying my big kit as well as the, uh, an, another two items that I'll go over here next. But I've had nothing but great experiences with this flashlight. You know, if American made um, is your priority, Surefire makes a lot of really great EDC lights. Personally, um, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the designs that Surefire offers, but if American Made is your priority, definitely check out Surefire. They have a lot of comparable um, products. But like, I, like I've said before, this was a gift and it's worked fine for me. So Olight Warrior Mini is my flashlight of choice. Next up is my wallet. Um, this is the base model black aluminum money clip option Ridge wallet. Before I had this Ridge wallet, I carried um, a traditional leather fold wallet, which you know worked for me for a long time before I got into EDC. Um, some of the common problems with a traditional wallet uh, is that it kind of gets you in the habit of keeping things that you don't necessarily need, um, which leads to bulkiness. Um, and then if it's, if you're carrying a really bulky wallet, you have it in your back pocket, sitting down for long periods of time. Uh, if you're driving or if you're in the office, it can get pretty uncomfortable. Um, so, and that's kind of where I found myself when I started searching for a more uh, sleek design and I came across Ridge uh, Ridge wallets they have a bunch of different options um, they have different color aluminums they have titanium uh, I believe they do a couple carbon fiber models and then if you don't like money clips they have a money strap which utilizes the same bungee material that holds the wallet together um, I personally don't carry cash all that often but when I do, I prefer the money clip. Um, this is made of a spring steel, the money clip. So it's very rigid. Um, once your money's in there, it's secure and you don't have to worry about it falling out. And then the wallet itself, I believe this model carries up to 12 cards. Um, at any given time, I'm carrying you know anywhere between seven and nine cards at max. I believe I have nine in here right now. Um, <clears throat> I have zero problems with these cards sliding out or um, giving me trouble in terms of accessing them. Uh, to get to the cards, Ridge built in a little finger notch here. You just press the cards up with your finger and then you can pinch that space and it kind of just fans your cards out for you so you can access all of them. Um, in some reviews, people have had complaints about that system, that fan system and they've had trouble accessing cards that they keep uh, in the middle of their wallet. You know, I haven't had any problems with that. Um, granted, I keep my most used cards um, in the back as well as the front. So accessing the cards I need most is relatively easy for myself. And then when I do need those cards that are in the middle, you know, it's not as easy as the front and back, but it's really not that challenging in my opinion. So, um, I highly suggest the Ridge wallet. I've had it for two years, I want to say, maybe three. Um, and since I've had it, it's held up really well. I've dropped it on multiple occasions. 
Um, you can see kind of along the edge here that I have different like scratches and marks just from dropping it and accidentally stepping on it, stuff like that. Um, but you know, I haven't dropped it and it just like completely shattered and broke. So I think Ridge Wallet is high quality. It's durable. It's, uh, I wouldn't say versatile really, but it definitely takes up a lot less space in your pocket, which leads to versatility for other items that you can carry. Um, again, if American made is your thing and that's, you know, that's a priority that you're placing on your EDC setup, Trayvax is another great EDC wallet company. Um, their wallets, you know, they're super high quality. They look a little bit more rugged. They incorporate, they incorporate leather into their designs, which is kind of cool. Um, actually my dad is about to get a Trayvax wallet. He's decided uh, um, after me telling him like 50 times to upgrade from his old wallet, the traditional leather fold wallet to um, a more EDC friendly design. Um, personally, I'm not in love with a lot of Trayvax designs. I think they're, they take a little bit more effort to get to certain things that you keep in your wallet. Um, and Ridge Wallet kind of just offers a basic design that enables you to access anything that you need super easy but Trayvax is a great option so definitely check them out if you're not sold on ridge wallets uh, and obviously there's a bunch of options out there besides ridge and Trayvax. so if you aren't sold on either of those and you find something else as long as it works for you that's really all that matters so um you know take this with a grain of salt but this is what I carry every day and I found that this suits my needs perfectly and I love it. Next up is a stick of chapstick. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you don't like having chap lips, I suggest having some chapstick. I live in Colorado. Uh, it's currently winter here. It's pretty dry. Uh, chap lips is a common problem with me so i always make sure i have a stick of chapstick in my pocket um i'd rather be comfortable than you know have to deal with crusty stinging lips all day so like i said this is pretty self-explanatory if you don't like carrying chapstick if you don't need to carry chapstick that's fine um but i definitely don't want to deal with chap lips so I keep that with me. Next up is my belt. Um, I've kind of went through all of the items in terms of uh, tools and um, I guess the traditional EDC stuff. Uh, now I'm going to kind of get into what enables me to comfortably carry uh, my concealed carry firearm, uh, my holster setup, as well as um, holding up the pants that all the other items are stowed in. So this is the Exos, uh, gun belt. This is a hundred percent leather. It's made in the United States. Um, it's a hundred percent stainless steel hardware. So the screws and the belt loop itself or the belt buckle itself are all stainless steel. Uh, they have different colors, different, uh, I think they have different widths and thicknesses. Uh, I just went with the base Exos belt. Um, it's very heavy duty. It's made for concealed carry. Um, so the, the designers at Exos made these belts with um, concealed carry in mind. So when you are carrying your firearm, uh, you are carrying all these extra items, this thing is definitely up for the job. I've had this, I wanna say about a year uh, I wear it every single day. I don't really wear any other belts. Um, when I do, I can definitely tell the difference. So if you're looking for a more traditional belt buckle style belt um, with concealed carry in mind and is made in the USA, I think Exos is a great option. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of the more tactical newer belts uh, that are also designed for concealed carry 
I've always been a fan of, you know, that traditional old school belt buckle stuff. Um, so this was a great find and I would highly suggest Exos gun belt. Next up is my firearm as well as the holster that I carry it in. Um, I carry a Gen 3 Glock 26 uh, and I have it holstered in a CYA Glock 26 carbon fiber holster. Um, I'll talk about the holster first. Like I said, this is from CYA. It is an American made company. Uh, I love their holsters and I've had nothing but great experiences with it so far. This is the carbon fiber model. They offer a bunch of different colors. Um, you can just do a plain Kydex. Uh, you can do different patterns like American flag. Um, I believe you can do, I wanna say you can do like a thin blue line design. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different options for style. I'm a, I'm a big fan of carbon fiber. Uh, I like the way it looks, so I went ahead I went ahead and purchased the carbon fiber model. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty basic holster. There's not much to talk about. Uh, it's an in the, inside the waistband clip, which is very durable, very high quality. The retention level is great. I'm never worried about my firearm for some reason popping out of the holster itself or the holster popping off my belt. Um, you can loosen and adjust these screws here. Uh, which are stainless steel black oxide um, But you can loosen these so when you are moving around the carry clip will adjust to a certain extent with your body uh, for more comfort. I Keep that I keep the clip pretty stiff just because I don't necessarily mind how it feels um, While it's stiff, but if that is a problem for you, you can adjust it and then the retention screw for your firearm itself is down here you can tighten or loosen that depending on um, how sturdy or how secure you want your firearm. I keep that pretty tight. Um, <clears throat> when you holster your firearm, there is an audible click that CYA does um, promote. So once it's holstered, you'll hear the click and then you'll know that your firearm's secure and you can just go about your business. Um, on the back side of this holster, you have a full slide length sweat guard um, obviously if you know anything about firearms obviously you don't want them to rust uh, and moisture is you know the leading factor in rust so buildup of sweat or any type of condensation on the inside of your holster is definitely a problem uh, for long-term health of your firearm i've found that this sweat guard you know accomplishes its purpose relatively well um, it does stick up quite a bit, obviously, because it is a full slide length guard. If you are worried about this thing digging into your skin, don't be. I've had zero problems with comfort and any, uh, I, I'd say hot spots in terms of digging into your belly. I, I do carry, um, appendix, so my stomach is the area of what would be concern, but... Overall comfort and overall quality from CYA is top notch. Uh, if you're looking for an American made holster, I would highly suggest going to CYA's website and checking out um, what they offer. Obviously, you might not be carrying a Glock 26, so if you're looking for a Glock 19, a Glock 17 mag, a SIG mag, um, whatever you're looking for, I'm, I'm almost positive they have it. If they don't, that's unfortunate, but there's a lot of options out there for holsters. Um, but this is the holster I carry. And then that leads me into my firearm. The firearm is clear. I'll keep the slide back just so you guys know. There's no round in there. Um, you know, there's not a lot to say about my firearm. It's pretty much a stock Glock. Um, the only thing that I've added to this thing are grips. Uh, these are Talon grips, which uh, is another American-made company. They make great grips for firearms. So if you're looking for um, some aftermarket upgrades, definitely look into Talon, T-A-L-O-N. Um, 
Other than that, like I said, it's a stock Glock. I haven't done anything to the trigger. I haven't done anything to the barrel. I haven't done anything to any other uh, internal components. Um, really, the only thing I have to say is that Glock is easily one of the most reliable um, firearm manufacturers in the world. There's a reason that police departments throughout the country go with Glocks. They're reliable, they're workhorses. You can put rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds through these things and they'll work just fine. Um, you know, they're pretty basic as far as firearms go. So they're not as flashy as some other firearms, but in terms of what you wanna get out of them, they're definitely the option for you. Um, and that really just sums up what I got to say about my firearm. Obviously, you're building your EDC for your personal use. So if Glock isn't your thing, you know, go with what you like. Uh, and that applies to literally every single item that I'm going over. Just go with what suits you and what you'll use. Um, personally, I like Glocks and the Glock 26 is a subcompact firearm. So it's a little bit on the smaller side and provides me a little bit more comfort for an everyday carry situation. These are double stack Glock magazines, uh, nine millimeter. I have a 10 capacity and a 15 capacity magazine. The 10 is usually my backup magazine for any malfunctions that I might find with a, uh, with my 15 capacity magazine. Obviously, I'm not carrying two magazines because I anticipate having to use 25 rounds of ammunition. I'm carrying it because if the magazine that I have in my gun malfunctions, it doesn't feed a round into my chamber, then I can quickly drop it, uh, discharge the malfunction, and then reload with my backup magazine. You know, a lot of people, especially people who don't know anything about guns and are against firearms, will say that people who carry two magazines are just looking for problems where they can, you know, fire 25 rounds. Uh, obviously, that's ridiculous. That's coming from somebody who has zero idea what it's like to carry a firearm. Um, firearms aren't perfect. You're going to run into malfunctions from time to time, and if you do, I would rather have a backup magazine ready to go than, you know, have to deal with the malfunction and then try and reuse this magazine in a life or death situation. You know, I'm not carrying concealed carry because I'm looking for problems or I'm trying to be the cool guy on the block. I'm carrying concealed carry because worst case scenario, I'm in a life or death situation and this is my tool of choice to protect my life and my loved one's lives. Um, the, if you are in a situation where you have to use your concealed carry, obviously shit has hit the fan, dude. So having a backup is a necessity in my opinion. Um, I kind of got worked up there. I, I just think it's ridiculous how people will take the fact that you're carrying two magazines and try and use it against you because they know nothing about the topic. I'm gonna get into the ammunition that I carry. This is a uh, Sig Sauer jacket at hollow point. Um, obviously, for self-defense, hollow points serve more purpose than a traditional Luger. Right now, I just have hollow points in here. Obviously, self-defense hollow points are probably the best ammunition to go with. There's a lot of options out there in terms of ammo manufacturers. Um, I've had zero problems with SIG. I've run this through my Glock at the range multiple times just to make sure I don't have any problems with it. And it's worked just fine for me. So find what works for you and go from there. The last item on my list that I'd like to go over today is my watch. Um, this is the G-Shock Master of G uh, Mudmaster. My dad actually got this for me on my 21st birthday. Uh, so I've had it for about two years. Um, I love this thing. It's a workhorse. It's not gonna break on you. And 
it, you know, this, this specific model offers a lot of really cool features. Um, outside of your traditional watch features and all the different settings, this has a uh, thermometer, it has a barometer, um, it has an altitude gauge, it has um, a step counter, and I believe it has a built-in compass as well. Um, it's waterproof up to 200 meters, I think, which, you know, is pretty ridiculous. I don't think you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're 200 meters deep in any body of water. This watch will withstand it. Um, it does have a LED backlight. Uh, the sun shining, or I guess not the sun, it is pretty cloudy outside. But the light from my window uh, kind of overpowers that light. But when it is dark, it's super bright. Uh, the hands on the watch are glow in the dark. So if you don't necessarily want to turn your backlight on, um, you can read the time easily with those glow in the dark hands. It's super comfortable. Uh, like I mentioned before, I used to work in a warehouse. So I used to ding this thing up on forklifts, um, pallets. Sometimes I would hit it with my knife. The overall durability of this this watch is great. I haven't had any problems with anything breaking. Um, the mineral glass hasn't scratched on me. Um, none of the internal components have ever come loose. Uh, the only thing that you will have to worry about with this model is uh, the battery life. It is two year battery life um, and then you'll have to replace it. I think there is a um, higher up model that G-Shock offers that is solar charged. Um, so then that kind of takes care of that problem if you don't necessarily want to deal with that. Um, me personally, I don't necessarily mind having to switch out the battery from time to time. So outside of that, that's probably the only drawback of this watch. Uh, it is pretty bulky. So if you know, you're not used to carrying around, if you're not used to wearing a watch in general, this will be something you definitely have to get used to. Um, but also if the watch that you wear on a day-to-day -day basis is relatively small, uh, like the watch I used to wear, which was just a basic Casio um, metal watch, which was very thin, very small face. It was nowhere near the size of this thing. Um, when this is on your wrist, like I said, if you're not used to it, it will take some getting used to. But once you've kind of adjusted to it and you um, are used to it, you'll, you'll love this thing. It's, you know one of the more renowned, I guess, outdoor adventurer watches. Um, you know, there's a lot of cooler options in terms of technology, uh, like Garmin offers some really cool watches. Even Apple Watch now has some really cool technological features um, that a lot of people like and use. Uh, I guess that does bring me to something that I did forget to mention. This is Bluetooth compatible. So there's an app on my phone that enables me to connect to this watch. It'll do automatic time adjustments. You can track trips on there. Um, that'll give you your step count for the day. Um, I think it'll allow you to read different um, gauges that are on this watch. But overall, I've had zero problems with it and I love this thing. Um, hopefully it'll last a really long time. And when it is time to replace this thing, I will likely be buying another one. Um, and you know, that kind of sums up what I carry on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't have much else to talk about. If this was in any way helpful or informative for you guys, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, become a member of the BLS family. Here at Bottom Line Survival, we're all about gear, we're all about the outdoors, and we're all about just knowledge in general. So if any of those things interest you, definitely hit that subscribe button. It's definitely appreciated. I plan to bring you guys new videos every week. Um, so hopefully that'll that'll fulfill your, your want and need for videos like this. Um, in the comment section, please give me some feedback on my personal EDC setup, as well as let me know what you guys carry on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm super curious to see um, how you guys have your EDC set up 
obviously it's different from person to person and it's always fun to see what tools and what items other people incorporate. With that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here. Have a good one, guys.